Hi there, Audi Builders, and welcome to the Autistic Bodybuilding Channel. Today, we're gonna talk about how to stimulate your appetite. So maybe for you, it's a daily struggle, or maybe you just ate something that wasn't really good for you and it grossed you out for a while and now your appetite's weird. I wanna talk about some ways that you can actually fix that. So first and foremost, obviously, and it goes without saying, prevention is best. If you didn't see my last video on picky eaters, go ahead and take a look at that. I talk a lot about how you can work sensory foods into your diet and make sure that your diet is structured in such a way that you're not grossing yourself out, but you're also getting the nutrients you need. So go ahead and take a look at that. But of course, we're people, we're not perfect. We're gonna have moments when we eat the wrong thing or life gets too busy and our appetite just goes straight out the window. So here's a couple things that you can do if prevention just did not work. So train yourself to eat by a timer. Maybe your appetite isn't gone because you're too busy to eat. Maybe your appetite just isn't there. You're just kind of down. You're not really accessing your appetite. A great way to get back in touch with it is to actually set a timer and eat once every two hours. Now, you don't have to eat a whole meal once every two hours. You can extend it to more like every three hours if that's more comfortable for you. But the idea is to just put something in your belly once every two hours. Sounds really simple, but it will in fact get your body expecting to eat regularly and you will want to start eating more and more for each one of those meals. So it could be as simple as you can only eat a handful of peanuts once every two hours for three days. Keep eating it, eventually your body will get used to that, it will start craving food at those times and you should be able to expand your diet a little bit. Another thing you can do to stimulate your appetite if it's just really not happening for you is watch cooking shows and go search recipes on Pinterest. You know, this is something I think a lot of people try to avoid when they're trying to lose weight. You can actually use this in the opposite direction to try to get yourself to want to eat more. So, Watch cooking shows about new things if that helps you get excited or watch cooking shows about things that you know are comfort foods for you that will get you craving those things. But pick and choose, play around, choose different searches and eventually you'll find something that triggers that thing in your brain that says, oh, this looks appealing. Maybe I want to eat that. And your appetite may start to come back that way. Another great way, and maybe I shouldn't say great way because a lot of trainers kind of scoff at this, but I think for us autistics, we need to utilize fast food and eating out. So if it's really to the point where you're just not eating and you know you can only get maybe one meal in that day and it's gonna have to be like drive through go do it. I'd rather you get those calories and get your appetite back than see you struggling, 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 not eating because you don't want to eat something that isn't healthy. Of course, eating out also circumvents things like executive dysfunction. If you're having issues preparing your own food, if you're having issues becoming overwhelmed by, oh my God, all this stuff's going on in my life. I just started a project in my life that's out of the ordinary for me. And I had to eat out a lot because it was either I ate out and took that planning and, and outsourced it to someone else, or I just didn't eat at all. So of course, eating out is great for that. It helps circumvent that barrier of preparation. It also, if you eat out, you're going to a place where the food is already being prepared, it's the smells are already in the air, and of course that's gonna pique your appetite a little bit more too. 
And if you go to a familiar place and you already know what to order, then I mean win, 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 right? You like you go to a familiar place, you smell the food that you know you want to eat. It's right there on the menu for you to order. There's absolutely no issues there. You just go in, order what you want, get it and go. And you know what? If it's really an issue of you're either going to eat this whatever you're going to eat <laughs> or you're going to eat something healthy and not be able to actually plan it and execute it and get it out there, go eat whatever. Don't worry about the macros. Just eat that food. So another thing that you can do if, you know, you've tried eating out, you've searched Pinterest, you've tried to do a timer, None of that is working on its own. Maybe it's helping a little bit, but you just need that one extra thing to like give you a push. There's a couple things you can do. You can set a goal. So setting a goal that requires consistent eating will give you more incentive to actually follow through on these other things you're doing to already try to get your appetite back. So Take up a sport. Do like a team sport with your friends. It doesn't have to be anything crazy like bodybuilding or competing on stage in a bikini. You can just go join your local basketball team and like compete with friends. Because the thing is, once you realize how hungry you are during the sport, during the game, you're going to want to eat a lot more the next time because you're not going to want to be so hungry and uncomfortable. It's kind of like playing a trick with your brain in that sense. You could also set a goal to learn a new cuisine. So maybe you've never ever cooked Korean food in your life. Learn all about Korean food. Learn a bunch of Korean recipes. That's going to encourage you to want to eat more because you're not going to want to waste all this food you just cooked, right? And it's exciting. You're learning something new and maybe it's something you've been getting takeout for a while and this is going to actually help you in more ways than one. And of course, the last goal you can set is a weight loss or gain goals. So the second thing you can do if you're having trouble adhering to all these little things I just mentioned for your appetite is scare yourself. I know this doesn't work for everybody and some people really do not thrive uh, with fear-based things. But for me, it can actually kind of help me a little bit and I know other autistics that it can help to look up what happens when you don't eat. A couple things happen when you don't eat. Your cortisol rises, so you're more likely to be stressed out. In fact, you can really tune into your body when you don't eat and really assess, like, how do I feel when I don't eat? That should be enough to make you feel like, okay, I got to find a way to eat because this isn't fun. For me, I get super irritable and it's just not worth it. A lot of the time your metabolism slows, it can cause issues later in life, weight gain later in life when your metabolism can't really come back and repair itself the way that it could when you were younger. You might have brain fog, uh, muscle breakdown. If you are trying to build muscle, your muscles are going to wither if you don't eat. You really need to keep eating enough food to stay in an anabolic state if you're trying to build muscle, and I will get to that in the next video. But also, bone breakdown. So if you don't eat enough earlier in life or you have issues with your appetite earlier in life, it can set you up for all kinds of things like osteoporosis and bone density issues later in life, which of course, also is not good. So if it helps you at all to scare yourself, those are some key points to remember. And for me, it does help me. So the last thing I want to say before I end this video, and I mean, it's so obvious, but this YouTube channel is really about trying to say the obvious things that no one else is saying. And this is definitely one of them. And this one is eat anyways. I know, I know it's like telling somebody with anxiety to calm down, but that's not how I mean it. Sometimes if your appetite is really that bad and nothing is working to get it back and nothing is helping you want to eat or stimulate your appetite, the only thing you can do is force yourself to eat anyways. And there's been times when I've done this as well. If you're forcing yourself to eat anyways, I will warn you, you might start to gag. That's how you know it's time to stop forcing yourself to eat anyways. So that's what I will literally do. 
I might set that timer for two hours. I'm really not hungry. I force myself to eat anyways until the point where I can't, even if that's only two bites of a piece of toast. It does get my metabolism going. It gets my stomach doing what it's supposed to do. And it does help gradually get my body back and get my appetite back. Here's the thing, guys. If your appetite is poor, there's a good chance that you're in some kind of fight or flight response. And when we go into fight or flight, that fear response, our cortisol, all those all that adrenaline and all those things going through our body actually shuts off our digestive system because it doesn't want to give our digestive system all this energy when it thinks that we need energy for fight or flight, okay? Our body, when we're in fight or flight, is continuously preparing to either run or fight, right? Fight or flight. So really, Sometimes the only thing you can do to get your appetite back is force yourself to eat anyways, force your digestive processes to work again, to try to force your body out of that fight and flight. Of course, though, make sure it's something that's texture neutral to you. Like for me, I could eat, I say this all the time, I could eat peanut butter no matter what. So I might just eat peanut butter and that might I might be able to get a little bit further with peanut butter than if I tried to say, eat something kind of soggy and gushy, like, I don't know, soup with dumplings. That would really screw up my texture issues. So of course, if you're gonna force yourself to eat, make sure it's something that you can eat that isn't gonna make the appetite problem worse. And of course, make sure it's something that you can eat fast. Make sure it's something that you don't have to think about. It's not gonna gross you out to see it prepared. You can just grab it, you can eat it before you have time to think about the fact that you're eating. And then hopefully by the time that your reflexes or whatever catches up to you and tells you to stop eating, you've eaten at least enough to get through part of your day, if not the whole day, depending on where you're at with your particular appetite dysfunction. So guys, I don't want to make this sound like it's super easy and I hope I did do it justice because getting your appetite back is so freaking difficult when you're autistic. I mean, I think it's difficult for a lot of people, but for us and our sensory issues and everything, it's so hard because you try to get your appetite back and then you eat something that screws it up again and then you try again and then you, it, it's so difficult. So be patient with yourself while you're trying to get your appetite back. It's not easy. Stay at it, be persistent, and don't get discouraged. So next week, I'm going to be doing that video for dieting for muscle growth. So that'll be on August 12th. If you want to be notified about that, hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.